of Van Cleek Hill is Lisa McMacken, a graduate of Van Cleek Hill Collegiate Institute and St. Lawrence College in Cornwall. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Michelle. I'm looking forward to finding out more about how Van Cleek Hill grew to become a town. Great. Let's take a quick look at where Van Cleek Hill is geographically located. We are in eastern Ontario on a hill that sits between the Ottawa River and the St. Lawrence River. Our location is also a midway point between Montreal and Ottawa. Historically, because of river travel, communities along river banks are the first to develop. Next are the communities located at a crossroads. Van Gleek Hill, as you know, is a crossroads for travel north-south between the rivers and east-west to the many communities between Montreal and Ottawa. I understand the crossroad feature of the town. It's easy to see. We have north-south highway 34, east-west county road 10, and even the 417. But why did people come here? Well, for that we go back to Simon and Cecilia Van Gleek. From their home, the couple operated an inn to serve the travellers who regularly passed by. This was in the early 1800s, when horse-drawn carriages and wagons averaged about 20 to 25 miles, or 35 to 40 kilometres, a day. Roadside inns were necessary. The presence of a busy inn encouraged tradesmen to set up shop. Soon there were blacksmiths and coopers nearby to service the needs of travellers. Keep in mind that other families were also settling and farming in our region. They were clearing land for seeding and livestock. Merchants, carriage makers, barrel makers, asheries, the list of businesses just kept growing. By 1840, Van Hill was a service center for the surrounding agricultural community. We are known today as the gingerbread capital of Ontario. We are also a red brick town. How do we explain this to our visitors? Now we get to the historical answer for the presence of so much red brick, and it belongs in part to a fire in 1855 that destroyed timber and log buildings in Van Gleek Hill. Fire jumped from wood frame building to wood frame building. There was already brick production taking place, and this serious fire boosted sales at our local brickyards. After the fire, many wood frame buildings were soon covered in red brick. Geologically, our region sits within what was the basin of the great prehistoric Champlain Sea. The clay deposit here, when fired in the kilns, produces the distinctive red-coloured soft brick we know as Van Gleek Hill brick. The family names connected to brick making here included Johnson, Potter, Guindon, Steele and Resbeck. In the 1920s, the demand for brick began to fade. Visitors today often say they find the Van Gleek Hill red brick buildings very warm and inviting. Coming back to my question about gingerbread, we see the gingerbread on the porches and under roof eaves, the turned posts, the heavy brackets, the decorative railings and spindles, the shingles and the barge boards. Where did it all come from? I know you're familiar with our gingerbread. Against the red brick, the turned wood gingerbread is certainly eye-catching. In Van Gleek Hill during the 1800s, there were at least three sawmills. One of the largest was the Van Gleek Hill Manufacturing Company located on Mill Street, where we now have our arena and community hall. In 1883, the Van Gleek Hill Manufacturing Company advertised specialty wood turning and scroll work. The gingerbread, or wood scroll work, that enhances our home exteriors and interiors was ordered at these local sawmills or through mail order catalogs. Michelle, tell me, why is it so popular? It's really a lot of work to maintain. I worked as a painting contractor in Van Cleek Hill, and I know the amount of work it takes to maintain. And I've seen you at work, Lisa. We can blame it on Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, who brought with him from Germany a love for detailed woodwork. British craftsmen picked up on this and began to create intricate wood patterns. The trend traveled by way of drawings, photographs, and catalogues throughout the British Empire. By the 1870s, the gingerbread craze was well underway, especially in Ontario. With the death of Queen Victoria in 1901, the popularity of gingerbread declined, and by the time of World War I, the craze was over. Gingerbread never made a resounding return after that. But today, we celebrate Van Gleek Hill's unique 19th century craftsmanship as the gingerbread capital of Ontario. Thanks for sharing this with me, Michelle. Now I can really appreciate the gingerbread when I'm painting.